Like my 16 year old just recently said, I don't really consider film a ballad art form. <laughs> okay, so that's the way you're gonna deal with it. Okay, I understand. When I got the script for Tender Bar, I had already read the book several years prior and remembered how much the character resonated with me of Uncle Charlie because of the way in which the setting was kind of set during, I, I'm basically the age that the kid in the movie is. And my dad worked in a bar and I grew up in a very kind of, a very similar type of environment. So I recognized so much about the character. And it was also familiar to me because, you know, I'm somebody who loves writing and has always loved literature and has always felt like a little bit of an outsider. I identified with that and I just thought, God, I, I love this script, I'm so lucky I have this chance. Okay, two rules. Queen of Corona. I'm never gonna let you win. And I'm gonna always tell you the truth. Your father is a dead beat. I'll take care of you. Teach the male sciences. I saw you in the yard playing sports. You're not very good. You know, find some other activities. I like to read. You read enough of those? Maybe. You could become a writer. One more thing, very important. Never hit a woman. Even if she stabs you with scissors. Got it. See me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Got an announcement. Today my nephew is officially a man. <laughs> my daughter told me when she was my 16 year old when she read the script, she said, Oh, look, you you're getting to play exactly yourself, like somebody who just stands around giving lectures to kids. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess maybe to the point. One of the things that I really liked broadly about the Uncle Charlie character was his honesty. You know, it's absolute, like, raw honesty. And it stands very much in contrast to the contemporary parenting model where you just sort of, you know, whatever the kids, you're great and everything's great and there are no winners and there are no losers. And Versus this guy who says, like, you're bad at sports, don't play sports, give up on that, <laughs> you know, to like a nine-year-old boy. Now, I don't think that extreme is probably the way to go necessarily, but I did appreciate that there is value in being honest with kids and that they need to trust you and they need to know that what you're telling them is the truth so that they can believe you when you tell them that you love them and that they're good enough and that they can do this. And I loved the, the honesty that he had and as such, the credibility he had with this young guy's nephew when he really came, you know, it was a point of crisis and relied on this, this older guy to, to help see him through. She doesn't love you. What you do next is going to be important. Would you go and stare up at the building in the rain? Baby! No. Well, I'm on my way. I don't know where I'm going. And I'm on my way. What are you going to do without the bad guy in your life? In life, you got to have it. If you don't have it, you never get it. say you got it. W.C. Fields has never worked with dogs or children. Dogs is tough. Um, children, you know, really depends on, like in, just like any actor, you know, it depends on the person. I think you have to establish a relationship with the young person, you know? And for me, that was not hard because Daniel is a wonderful, lovely young guy. He's my son's age. And so it was very easy for me to tap into connecting with a young man that age and was away from my kids. We have 50-50 custody and for me to, you know, give up. In fact, any of those three and a half days in a week is very, very difficult and painful and hard. And so it's got to really be worth it to me and, and like really worth it. And this movie was special enough uh, that I thought, okay, this is worth it. I'm not sure that all my kids would say, that. they're like, go ahead, great, knock yourself out. But, especially the teenagers. But the, um, my son, you know, is, is, is harder for us, he's younger, and you know, and I missed him and, and thought about him a lot, and, and so kind of had that energy already that I was able to give to Daniel, and I think we've we had a lovely experience. He was wonderful, and he's just great. All my kids are really smart and brilliant and creative and just sharp, and 
I do get like notes and feedback and stuff. And my, my eldest was really helpful, you know, looking at drafts of The Last Duel, for example. And yeah, they give me notes. I mean, sometimes they're like, Dad, you're a meme. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm never more famous than if I'm a meme. That turns out that's like the highest art form and everything else. So, like, if that's all it takes, you gotta be like a meme and like drop a, like a coffee. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, you know, if I'd known that was the, the goal in life, I probably would have worked a lot less hard. Uh, you know, they have a complicated relationship with it because I think they naturally, like any children, of people who both their mom and I are public figures. And so I would imagine that, you know, that's a complicated thing to, to deal with. But they're all really smart and really creative and really wonderful. And they're not that interested in watching my movies, but they'll watch the ones that they can kind of like make fun of or have fun with. Like they really liked Armageddon, you know, and my eldest liked Argo, did see that. They liked Good Hunting. And I was like, you see, I'm not the only person who swears this much. There's a whole city full of people who talk like this. I, you don't know this because you live in Los Angeles where people behave like civilized human beings and don't end up in fistfights over minor uh, issues and constantly swear. But that is actually <laughs> how we did things when I grew up. Uh, and I think that helped them be like, oh, our dad's not totally crazy. There's a whole like world of other crazy people out there that live, do these things. But they also like, you know, relentlessly, you know, mock like Daredevil and stuff. Like, are you supposed to be blind? Because you don't look blind. Why is your hair red? And why is it poking out like that? Did you think this was good when you were making it? It's just like, you know, <laughs> these things aren't always obvious at the time. So it's kids keep you humble.